everyone welcome to my channel my name is Stephanie and you're welcome to a new video okay so in today's video I'm going to be talking about my face my skin condition I have a skin condition that is called acne and I have had acne for over 16 years yes 16 years I have definitely struggled with maintaining a blemish free skin I haven't struggled with acne because me and acne are like very close it just comes naturally what doesn't come naturally is blemish free skin so I've struggled a lot with maintaining a blemish free skin and the reason why I've struggled is not because I wasn't treating it the right, right way or I didn't go to the right people to go to like the dermatologists and the estheticians and all that no I <sighs> some of these mistakes are my own mistakes like I went through different stages in this whole acne journey in the 16 years of suffering from acne I went through the stage of mm, is an hygiene thing i have to wash my face maybe three or three times or even six times in a day Whew, which is wrong anyway so i went through that stage of thinking it was a hygiene like for the love for the longest time in the beginning of when i started breaking out i thought it was a matter of oh this is nemesis this is karma for all those times as a child that i would say i've had my bath meanwhile i didn't bath you know, all those you know i don't know why we kids at that time we just when we were, why do we do all these things uh, so when our parents are saying go and do what you're supposed to do and you rely and say you didn't do it definitely i thought it was karma i thought it was oh i didn't all those things i did as a child like refusing to bath or not bathing properly or rushing up to bath so you can go and watch cartoon or something i thought for the longest time it was hygiene and there was a stage where I, I was so misinformed about um, skincare products so i would start a product and i would believe that oh i'm supposed to see results within that day that i started it that i applied it onto my face and obviously that's not how products work that's not how ingredients work do you understand me so i was definitely impatient so that was number one mistake being impatient being misinformed about the proper usage of um products and everything and then think i oh for the longest time i actually believed that i was going to outgrow my acne like i was thinking oh it's just something that happens to you when you when you're a teenager you're going to outgrow it and when you reach like your 20s or your 21 you're going to be acne free <sighs> boy oh boy was i wrong <laughs> i was so wrong even when i started going to see a dermatologist my the very first dermatologist i went to go and see was i was in my ss2 and i started breaking out in my js2 if not my js1 see i can't remember whether i was really breaking out badly during my js1 but i do remember that it was from my js2 that i that i started using neutrogena and uh, all these salicylic acid cleansers that neutrogena has I was using it very very wrongly because I, like i said i used products wrongly in the beginning because of misinformation and me thinking that it was a hygiene thing so i had to like go into town and cleanse it cleaning my face but yeah so going to see a dermatologist was definitely a turning point in my skincare journey because the minute i went for a consultation it was so enlightening like it made such a positive impact in the way i was viewing my skin and my acne and my pimples do you understand me it made a very very big change because that's when i got to understand that it wasn't even a matter of oh i was um wasn't cleaning my face properly or it was karma that came <laughs> back to bite me in the butt no it was just a simple matter of you know oiliness acne is a skin condition that is very much related to oiliness and hormones so being acne prone as I was, it meant that I was just more oilier than most people and because acne, the bacteria that causes acne, sorry, loves oiliness, it just, you know, it found a, a beautiful place to stay, which was my skin, to, you know, grow, reproduce, because the acne, the bacteria reproduces, it, it produces waste, it blocks up your pores, that's how you lead to having, that's how you have, sorry, breakouts that's what leads to breakouts on my skin 
so it was definitely enlightening going to see a dermatologist i definitely was much more informed or had much more knowledge about my skin condition and um it definitely helped me because from there she you know diagnosed you have acne prone skin you have an oily skin i wasn't supposed to use a cleanser that had salicylic acid because of the fact that my skin did not do well with salicylic acid so going to a dermatologist was very impactful because i got to understand that i had cystic acne cystic acne is the one where your skin is red and there's a white head there's a white part of it and it has pus so it wasn't a matter of me using scrubs or toners or very harsh cleansers because all i was doing was popping those things and transferring the pus somewhere else and of course because i was transferring the pus which is you know the infection itself the, inf the i was just spreading it all over my face and reinfecting myself so one thing i've learned from going to dermatologists like just that first experience with a dermatologist was one not to pop my pimples not to play with it though i won't lie i've play i've definitely gone through situations where i was just popping and playing with my pimples but she told me that it's not advisable because i was just literally spreading the pimple the pus around my face and I wasn't even getting everything, even when I was popping my pimples or scratching it off my face. I wasn't getting the whole pus. I was just getting the top of it and then the remaining was still in my skin. So it had to be treated properly. So she taught me the importance of using a cleanser that was without salicylic acid because I did not do well with salicylic acid. She made me to understand that when it comes to cleansers, I should be looking for things that do not actually have an active inside it so no salicylic acid nothing like um glycolic acid so no ahas no bhas what i should consider using is a simple cleanser that just will clean my face not strip it and just do what it's supposed to do just clean so she at that time was the dermatologist at that time was working with um Cebermed. Cebermed at that time that was like Man, this is many years ago. It was so new and Supermed was really, really hard to get. She was the only one at that time selling it in Enugu. And she recommended for me their cleanser. And one, one thing that I love the most about Supermed, especially their acne line, the clear face line, they used to have little palmlets. They don't do it anymore. I think because of they want to like save the planet, they want to be more eco-friendly. They set up they stopped printing out that paper. But back then there used to be a little palmlet inside each one of their products especially in the especially in the clear face line that used to have like so many information about acne and um how you have to concentrate on the ph balance of your skin in order to not promote the production of um acne on your skin and ph that's how i got to learn about ph balance and see your skin producing an oil called your it's called sebum Yes, it's called sebum. And the minute you consume, minutes and oily skin people produce a lot of oil, but sometimes it's as a result of their skin being dehydrated. So you would have to like really, really um, not try and over strip or, or, or make your oily skin really, really dry because your oily skin will overcompensate for that dryness by producing more oil so it was very impactful not only did i learn a lot from the, the brand itself like sebamed but the, the doctor herself was very very patient she was patient with me she explained everything because then i strongly believed that it was a hygiene problem and she had to tell me no that i was making my skin worse by going like going really really harsh with those um, cleansers now you would know Salicylic acid is probably one of the number one ingredients that is recommended for people who have acne prone or oily skin But I can tell you from my experience that acne is very personal. What works for A might not work for B I know a lot of people that have cleared their acne with salicylic acid like just using a salicylic acid cleanser or a serum or a toner or whatever and their skin was cleared for me no even current recently i tried to use a salicylic cleanser and my skin went into complete shutdown like my skin broke out really really bad and that was last year december my skin was really bad because i was using a salicylic acid face mask actually not a cleanser no i was using a cleanser and a face mask with salicylic acid and my skin broke out badly my skin broke out badly to the point that i had to go against a dermatologist the new a new one 
that I'm using now because my first dermatologist I could not continue um, consultation with her because well she's no more she's no more you know she's no more alive yeah so rest in peace it's not like there's been like a whole long period where i wasn't seeing a dermatologist no i've actually seen a couple before when i um, wasn't able to see the first dermatologist and it was still the same thing oh you need to continue you need to use um then um the, the acne treatment alongside some kind of topical anti antibiotics and also you know um use a cleanser that is not so harsh on your own skin because this is a cleanser that is good for every other person but for me it wasn't so good that's why i said harsh because it's not harsh in the sense that the skin the, that, that salicylic acid is bad no it was just harsh for me and my own skin type maybe i have some kind of like real um like sensitivity or i have some kind of allergy to salicylic acid but i don't i don't play with salicylic acid no 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 salicylic acid has no place in my skincare routine going to see a dermatologist yeah you would think that everything was rectified maybe i had a much better understanding of acne maybe i now knew what to do what not to do no 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 like i said for the longest time i thought I was going to outgrow acne i thought it was like if i do this if i use this the acne will disappear and it's not come back again there was definitely a period where i was thinking oh mm, my face is clear i don't have to continue with the acne treatment no that's a mistake i made so there were various there were so many times where i would have a relapse and a, a not a fresh breakout and i would have to restart the, the treatment so i definitely went back and forth be between oh my face is clear i don't have to continue using it and then having a relapse and then having to continue again with the acne treatment and it it became you know sometimes me i can be very stubborn at times and sometimes i can refuse to listen to um what people are telling me even if it was coming up from a dermatologist telling me this is what you need to do and you have acne prone skin you have this you have cystic acne you really have to continue using this acne treatments you it's, it's it's just how it how it has to be maybe you can reduce the frequent the the frequency or you can be less frequent sorry with your application let's say if you are using it every night you can now use it like three times in a week especially depending on how clear your face is or something like that but you have to continue using it but i refuse to listen to that I was strongly believing that I was going to outgrow the acne. So I was patiently waiting for when I would turn like 20, 21, and then all the acne disappeared. And for, for some time, I actually thought it was clearing up because I had a very nasty breakout before getting pregnant. And then the breakout rectified, like my skin got clear within three, three months of being pregnant. And then I didn't see acne throughout my pregnancy. And then I didn't see acne after being after after give, giving birth and all that. And this 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 has happened to me, my first pregnancy and my second pregnancy. I don't I don't I don't have any pimple to whatsoever. So by the time you know I start seeing my period again, my pimples start coming out. So that was the time when I was like, okay, so we have to accept the fact that we are in fact acne prone and we are in fact experiencing some kind of hormonal imbalance yes i have been told a dermatologist has told me that there might be some kind of hormonal imbalance like my hormones are a little bit um wink 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 <laughs> hence the reason why i'm breaking out whenever i see my period so i should consider the fact that i might be having hormonal acne cystic acne and i could be breaking up because of that but i refused to listen but of course experiencing it myself seeing that i didn't break out while pregnant and i only started breaking out when i saw my period after you know a while that's when i accepted the fact that yes i do in fact have hormonal acne and i have to treat it the way it's supposed to be treated and the fact that the only time that i would be acne free is probably when i decide to go on bed control which i trust me i did I can't do that i can't keep up with the the way you're supposed to take bed control pills i can't keep up with that thing i will i was very forgetful and it just didn't work out honestly so i have to treat 
it with all these like ointments and creams and what i'm supposed to use so i have to continue using it no matter what but that was another turning point in my acne journey when i realized that i had hormonal acne and therefore i had to treat it the way hormonal acne is treated and i had to accept that i was acne prone and there was nothing that i could do and i just had to like follow up with the treat with the ointments and the creams i had to make it a part of my skincare routine and all that yeah that was a, that was a big turning point because then i was like okay so this is what i have to do i have to always be using this product this is what this is what i have to do so with that being said let me finally tell you what exactly i was always being prescribed and what i was using to compact my acne prone skin and my oiliness so when it comes to um cleansers i was using the sebamed clear face facial they have a, a, a the bar yes let me let me be more specific because i know they have a foam cleanser and then they have their bar soap so i was using the bar soap and then i was using benzyl peroxide for the first time coming into contact with benzyl peroxide i used five percent five percent benzyl peroxide then after being after being diagnosed with hormonal acne or realizing rather that i had hormonal acne i was using benzoyl peroxide at 2.5 percent which i prefer my skin actually prefers benzoyl peroxide at 2.5 percent whenever i would have like a really bad breakout the dermatologist would always recommend for me a topical antibiotics to use alongside the benzoyl peroxide and then as far as um, toners serums I was never recommended those no um it's actually just recently that the dermatologist said i should go ahead and use like nanocinamide and trans transamic acid azelaic acid all those kind of things so before it was my skincare routine was quite basic because it was just cleanse treat moisturize spf that's all um this is really important because it's only recently that i understood the importance of hydrating your skin with hydrating products um, using a very good moisturizer because I used to skip moisturizing because I was like I have oily skin what do I need a moisturizer for but oily skin is not moisturized skin oily skin sometimes is dehydrated skin and that's why I also have to like make sure I drink enough water so I hydrate my skin from within and I recently discovered that not only do I break out because of my my period and what was that my hormones i break out because of my food yes my food i break out from food now acne prone skin is we all know, i think um it's i don't think this one is new i feel like this is something that if you suffer from acne you already know um we break out from dairy products so anything that had dairy inside it is an automatic automatic no and that's things like bread cake and so on and so forth and <laughs> if you know me you know that i love bread ah i love bread i love sweet things i have a sweet tooth like a very big massive sweet tooth so <sighs> i'm always going to be breaking out especially when i give into temptation and start eating like all these McVitie biscuits, um, Fox biscuits, M and M, Mark and Spencer's biscuits, chocolate, all those kind of things, bread. I'll start breaking out for me. This I knew because I know that sugar and inflammation they definitely play a role. This is something I discovered on my own. Apparently, most people who break out a lot have some kind of like insulin resistance, so you really don't need to put any anything. You really don't need to eat sorry anything that has a lot of sugar refined sugar inside it and you really don't need to also eat a lot of like simple carbs so learning this i just sat down and i really went through like a mind-blowing moment so i was like oh my god all this while that i've been eating rice and i've been eating pasta i've been breaking up because of that Ah, 
and oh trust me i went through, i could I, I could i can easily give up sugar because i know sugar is not even healthy milk is not even healthy yes i should give up those things but uh i i said no i'm not giving up rice i'm not giving up spaghetti like what am i going to eat excuse me no i'm not doing that but obviously i have to and i've been doing very well since the beginning of this year i've not been eating like trust me i've not eaten rice so, so having acne prone skin is not a small thing no it's not and everybody's own story is different everybody's own story is different because i used to watch a lot of youtube videos of people who broke out especially if i wanted to buy a product even from foundation i would like to see reviews and so long as that person says i'm acne prone and i use this foundation and it was fine and good i will try and get it like i would and i don't just commit by buying a full size product i will try to get a sample i will try to test it out see how um, long i can stay without it breaking out breaking me out because i broke out from mac i broke out from so many other um, foundations because there was a period where i would slather my whole entire face with makeup because i was hiding my my acne but that was only because of during that time we were not as strong as we are in the whole acne journey because definitely acne mental health <laughs> acne will show you pepe <laughs> acne will show you pepe because you will go through, you will you will hear a lot you will hear a lot i i can't even like if i was to sit down here and tell you guys in details the things that i've heard just going out on my own you know maybe i'm with friends maybe i'm on my own i will get advice from complete strangers there was a period where i was very gullible and like i said there was a period where i was listening to every single thing and i was trying every single thing on my own face it definitely beat me in the butt but let me tell you that some of the things that i tried that when i look back on it i cringe like you know how you, you just go ah because you're like why did i do that because trust me i did i think i think i think i did i did all the duis online that you can think of for acne i did honey sugar lemon scrub that thing gave me a bone like it was very painful because i did it while i had active acne and it burnt those open wounds it was painful i did the whole toothpaste thing which please if you have acne don't ever rub toothpaste on your face it doesn't work it's rubbish i one woman told me that i should rub peace on my face and this girl went to go and do it i did it I rubbed pee on my face, my own pee, early morning pee. She told me to do it. I did it. Oh my God. I was definitely gullible. I spent my last money, my savings, I spent it on skincare products that are not even related to acne. Is it black soap? There was a time where I was strongly believing that black soap would be the solution to all my problems. Black soap didn't do anything besides damage my skin because my skin is very sensitive you can't you can't just use any product on it i, I learned it the, the hard way trust me so if you see black soap uh, i run away from it no way jose no matter how gentle the person tells me the black soap is i'm not using it thank you no um if is it all these dui projects they'll tell you oh put um, apple cider vinegar on your face I used apple cider vinegar that thing didn't do anything for me it didn't do anything um i think the only dui project i did to a dui project <laughs> i think the only dui stuff that i ever did that worked was honey i used to use honey on my face in the morning like a face mask and the only reason why it worked was because i was using my um, acne medication at the time and benzoyl peroxide has this way of making your face very dry and very as it can lead to like itching it can lead to like peeling so i was using honey on my face as a as a face mask and that really helped with the peeling and the itching and all that stuff because honey is a humectant and it hydrates and moisturizes your skin so it was really helping in the dryness and hydration aspect and i still actually use honey on my face just for that sole reason 
because if you're using acne fighting ingredients like benzoyl peroxide tretinoin azelaic acid or even salicylic acid your skin is definitely going to be very very dry so I've, i always use honey at, in the past to like hydrate my skin like i would put it on and wash it off like after 10 or 15 minutes and that really helped that's the only dui i would say i used and it worked for me um so right now we're really we actually are recovering from a very nasty breakout that i had during the, this, uh, the last ta and beginning of this year but so far it's been good because i've stuck to my routine i've there was trust me there was uh, there was a point beginning of this year where i wanted to switch off from my actual products what i use and try a new product that someone was recommending for me and i'm so proud of myself because i didn't fall into temptation i did not even consider it because i was like no stephanie I, I i i just had to tell myself in the mirror like i talked to myself i was like you're going to stick with this treatment that the doctor has recommended for you you're going to stick with it for as long as you need to stick with it and you know already that these things are going to work you're not new into this game you have suffered from acne for 16 years you know already that you have tried to use different products and it didn't work for you stick with what is being recommended for you because what was being recommended for me wasn't new it was basically the stuff that i know i already have a lot of information for because i didn't just go to see a dermatologist i also made it made it a personal goal to make sure that i would learn on each on my skin condition learn about it understand the way these products work so i can have a better understanding and be, be less gullible and be and be more patient with um getting like acne free and maintaining bl a blemish free skin so i had to stick with it i really and i'm glad i did i'm really proud of myself i need to tap myself on the back be like girl i'm proud of you because ah i went through hell in february my skin was really at its worst because i had breakouts everywhere but i was patient i stuck through i was following what i was supposed to do every night and i was strict with myself with my diet no rice no sugary stuff no just basically no simple carbs no refined sugar no dairy i was determined and it worked like really my skin the only thing i'm suffering from now is basically what gets left behind after i've broken out which is like the redness and then the brown spots but that's under control because i know what to do at that stage i probably will do another video discussing what to do after acne or something like that probably even show you the actual products i use because right now i'm just talking i'm not showing you guys the products i'm not i'm only going to show you guys like pictures yes i'm going to show you guys pictures of um when i was breaking out and then after of course i'm going to show you before and after pictures and then the next video our next video that i'm going to do on skincare i'm going to talk about um my experiences using benzoyl peroxide my and my experiences using the current treatment i'm using right now because for my last consultation with my dermatologist there was something that we changed in my skincare routine and that was the reason why i really went through a tough time this this time around in clearing my face because there was a new product that I'm using so I'm going to talk about that new product in another video that I'm going to do in regards to acne and I did say I was going to do part of the content on my, part of the content on my channel would be skincare so I want to have more to talk about have more videos and all that stuff so if this is something that you like and you want to watch more please subscribe <laughs> please subscribe to my channel it helps a lot when you know it helps a lot definitely for to welcome new subscribers so please subscribe and you know press on that notification bell so you don't miss out and please like the video especially if you found it very informative and you know helpful please like the video and thank you guys so much for watching see you guys in my next video
light, please now. Cooperate with me. Tell me.